What's up, everybody, and welcome back again to another episode from Key Points. My name is Ahmed Mofta. I'm a technical training and design manager here in Cisco, and we are about to discuss more SD Access topics. It's going to be the SD Access overlay functions. So if you're watching this, don't forget, hit the like button, share this video, and subscribe so that you can get more and more of the Key Points series. All right, so let's watch and learn. Okay, so here we go. Let's start as the access overlay functions. Uh, I'm going to start with an unusual thing here and we're just going to change fields, change the career for a little bit and we're going to work with the carpeting industry. What? Wait, wait, what did you just say? Carpets? Yeah, exactly. Carpets. Uh, uh, what's the relationship between carpets and networking? What's going on? It's actually related. Bear with me. Let's just see that. It, it, it's. Let me ask you a question. If you want to make sure uh, you just bought a fancy carpet and you want to make sure that this carpet is going to last as long. So you want to make sure that the durability of the carpet is something that you're going to focus on. So what are you going to do? Uh, you might just insert another piece of fabric underneath the actual carpet. This way, the durability of this carpet is guaranteed. Okay, well, if you can see this picture right here, mainly the actual carpet is right here. That's my main carpet, but then I'm protecting this carpet with a piece of underlay carpet. That's another carpet underneath it, which is going to protect my main carpet. That's exactly what we're going to do in the networking industry, in the enterprise campus. Well, in the enterprise campus, what do we have? Carpets? <laughs> no, we have routers and switches. You're going to connect those routers and switches. These are traditional routers and switches. Connect them in a traditional way with traditional routing and switching protocols. If we're talking about routing, this is going to be OSPF, EIGRP, any protocol that you like. If you're talking about switches, it's going to be spanning tree or whatever layer two or layer three protocol that you like. Make sure that these devices are connected. This is what's going to make up your underlay, a bunch of traditional network devices connected with traditional protocols. Well, guess what? We are trying to achieve enhance functionalities we are trying to give your enterprise campus more functions and automate the functions uh in this fabric and give you the best experience that we need thanks to software defined access thanks to the cattle center so what's going to happen well on top of these underlay devices you're going to configure some kind of virtual imaginary devices and imaginary functions which are going to run with their specific protocols completely different from the protocols that we're running underneath and the devices themselves they're virtual they're imaginary but they're going to give you more enhanced functions all right well who's going to do this what is the device responsible well, you got it already you know it this is going to be your cattle center i know you can see the dna center over here but then again don't forget this is the old name the new name right now is the cattle center hand in hand the side wingman of the cattle center is actually your ice server which is going to be responsible for policy enforcement and segmentation this is with this is going to give you the core of IBN, intent-based networking, where you're actually translating any kind of intent from the network engineer perspective into policies and configuration, automatic configuration, which is going to be passed by the cattle center all the way to the underlay and overlay devices. All right, well, that's cool. That's good. Just tell me more about those overlay devices and overlay functionalities that the SD Access fabric is going to give us. Well, here we go. Let's do it. Here we go. Oh, look at that. Lots of E's and B's and C's. <laughs> First of all, let me just start by breaking this down into a couple of layer. The controller layer or the controllers, the main controllers within your SD Access fabric are the Catalyst Center and the Side Wingman, the Identity Services Engine. That's your controller layer okay then what we have then we have all the network devices right here in a separate layer and this is what we call the sd access layer the sd access fabric okay all of these devices are considered the sd access fabric so let's just break down those devices piece by piece one by one i'm going to start first with something here which is not really important the intermediate node okay what is that intermediate node it's a traditional underlay device yes it's an underlay device responsible for interconnecting multiple overlay nodes in case you have a 
lore setup. Uh, wh wh what do you mean? Look at those Bs, which I haven't explained yet, and look at those Cs and Es. If you expect to have a large enterprise campus with lots and lots of nodes and lots of lots of devices, switches and routers, I mean, then you're gonna need some kind of, um, hmm, distribution layer. We're gonna call this the intermediate layer and those devices do not participate whatsoever in the overlay functions. They're only responsible to pass the traffic between those B's and E's and C's. And we're gonna get to, get to know about the B's and C's and E's right now. Okay, that's the intermediate node and it's not mandatory and it could be there or it could be eliminated in case, in case you have a smaller fabric. So let's just dive into the most important nodes. First, we're gonna start with the C. C stands for control plane node. Just note it down. Control plane node. What does it do? This is your control plane. This is the control plane, which is going to run a specific protocol. I'm going to talk about the protocols later on. It's going to run a specific protocol to guarantee that we have the largest database, which includes each and every end user address. End user address. So like, what are the end users? Those are the Devices which are going to get connected to your network, laptops, servers, access point, uh, servers, uh, PCs. All of these devices have IP addresses and MAC addresses. Guess what? The control plane node is going to register. It's going to collect all the information about those end users, their IPs and MAC addresses, along with the directly connected edges connected to them. Okay, all right, all right. Well, for example, let's just imagine that this device right here, the edge right here, is connected to a PC or a device. I'm gonna call this device, device, uh, device A, right? So this device A has an IP and has a Mac, and it is somehow connected to this edge node. So what is gonna happen here? The control plane node needs to learn about all the IPs and Mac addresses of each and every device within the fabric. Cool, that's good. What is your next node? My next node is gonna be the border node. All right, the, the border node, as the name implies, border. Oh, what does it do? This is the device which stands at the border. It's responsible to take my traffic out towards the outside domain, towards the outside campus, right? It's not just a single campus that needs to talk to itself. It needs to talk to the outside world as well. So this is mainly your gateway. This is your router, which could be an internal border that could take your traffic out to remote sites and other data centers and other, you know, uh, well-known sites to the organization, or it could be an external border that can take your traffic out to the unknown domain, such as the internet, for example. Or maybe you can just combine those border functionalities, border node functionalities in one box, in one device, and it's going to be responsible to pass all the information which is being learned from the outside domain to the control plane node as well. What do you mean? Well, any piece of information that the border, what piece of information? Any addresses that the border node is gonna learn, which is gonna come from the outside world, it has to be passed to the control plane node because don't forget the control plane node is the node which has that database that registers every IP and MAC, right? Whether these IP addresses are, and MAC addresses are coming from outside or coming from inside. If the IP addresses and MAC addresses are coming from the inside world, so where is it gonna be expected to come from? It's gonna be expected to come from the edge, the edge node. The edge node is the closest possible device to the end users, and it's responsible to register all the IP addresses and MAC addresses of each and every end user with the control plane node. Hey, don't forget, we're contributing in building up the database, the biggest database of the entire fabric, which is called the host tracking database. Host tracking database, yeah, it's that database, that the gigantic database that has all the information that we've got in the SD access fabric. So the edge node is gonna register those IP addresses and MAC addresses with the control plane node, including its own address include it's going to be like oh, oh mr control plane node i am the edge node i'm the one responsible for this device device number a and i'm just trying to tell you tie between my own ip address and its ip and mac address all of this is going to be combined and registered with the host track with the control plane node why are we actually so concerned about the host tracking database and the control plane node we're just going to make sure we're trying to make sure that each and every piece of information is found in that host tracking database so that 
in the future, if there is any device on the other end which is trying to communicate, let's say that this is device X, which is trying to communicate with device A, it doesn't know about its IP for somehow. It doesn't know about its MAC address for somehow. So what is it going to do? It's going to send an ARP, but ARP is actually, hmm, it's going to flood everywhere. ARP requests are, you know, broadcast messages which are going to flood the network. I don't want to just keep ARPing and flooding my network. The ARP is going to be sent to the edge node. The edge node is going to consult the control plane node and the control plane node guess what this is the big boss he knows everything every single piece of information is registered right there so i'm going to be able to unicast my reply back to you mr edge and tell you exactly where you can find your device that you're trying to talk about which is device a well good news that's that's, that's actually the magic of sd access but wait, wait, wait we're not done yet we also have some kind of uh, wireless functions and this is going to be a wireless LAN controller and hey this is just going to be a traditional wireless LAN controller it's not just going to be an underlay wireless on top of it there's an overlay wireless and it's just a wireless LAN controller that can be combined along with the wired fabric if you want to have mixed wired and wireless fabric in the same fabric be my guest you can do that with the wireless LAN controller we're going to have access points as well so this completes your wireless communication and finally if you happen to have some kind of IoT, Internet of Things, and there are some IoT devices that need to get connected to your fabric, then you're going to connect them through some kind of extended nodes. All right, you guessed it. The access point are connected to the edges and the extended nodes are also connected directly to the edges. All of these, all of these Bs and Cs and Es, all these devices are actually overly f imaginary functions. So what do you want, want to tell me? Uh, we're not going to go and buy from Cisco a border or a control plane or an edge node. What, what are you going to buy then? You're going to buy the underlay devices and then configure them to act as an overlay function. So what are those underlay devices? The underlay devices are traditional switches and routers. And we try to tell you that the most important devices in the SD access field is the catalyst. 9000 series switches. So your Catalyst 9000 series switch is actually your superstar of the SD Access family. So whether we're talking here about switches or we're talking about routers, it's always going to be um, Catalyst 9, uh, 9000 series switches. But hey, do we still support other devices like, like uh, other devices such as Catalyst 45, Catalyst 36, or uh, you know any other switch or any other routers like ASR and ISRs? Well, yeah. It is supported. We don't just want you to focus only on Catalyst, although that's the best option and the best offer, but then still you can leverage the existing infrastructure in case you still have those legacy devices in place. And when it comes to wireless, we have Catalyst 9800 WLC, which can act as multiple things at the very same time. Or maybe we're talking here about access points which are wave one or wave two access points. Catalyst 9200 access points are actually uh, another uh, device which has been added to the wireless family. If you're talking about extended nodes, then we have the CDB, the Cisco Digital Building, Catalyst 3560, or maybe the Cisco Industrial Ethernet switches. I know they have a question. Maybe you're thinking about, hmm, can I combine all those devices in one box? I mean, if there's some kind of a smaller site or a small, smaller campus, can I just combine them all together? Like the border node, the control plane node, the edge node all together? Yeah, it is actually a valid uh, assumption. And it, th this is something that can happen. You might have a very small campus, which is only just connected to a bunch of end users. And you don't need all those devices in that campus. Just a single box, for example. Is that possible? Absolutely. It is possible, which is going to be a Catalyst 9000. This is only going to be a Catalyst 9000, which can act as border, control plane, an edge node, and a wireless LAN controller at the very same time. And guess what? We're going to call this function, we're going to call this fabric in a box. FIAP, yes, <laughs> you heard me right. Fabric in a box. Cool, amazing. All of this is going to happen through the Catalyst center as i said the catalyst center in order to give you the sd access functions there are five major tabs five major workflow steps that you need to go through in order for this to happen some of them are mandatory some of which are optional so these five step workflow are design provision policy assurance and platform 
All right, well, design is when you need to design your fabric, when you need to just plan some kind of IP addresses, when you want to upgrade, downgrade your uh, operating system of the entire fabric. If you want to do some kind of, uh, you know, um, floor maps and uh, buildings and create your locations, that this is where you get to design your fabric. Then you're going to create some kind of provisioning. What is the provisioning going to do? This is where you create the underlay and overlay functions. Underlay devices has to be have to be configured with traditional routing and switching protocols. And overlay functions, ah, control plane, border node, and edge node, they need to be configured with the specific protocols that we haven't talked about yet. And then don't forget to configure some segmentation policies. This is the most important thing. The, the difference maker, which is going to give you SD access, configure policies with the help of ICE server to give you micro and macro segmentation. And then if you want to monitor your fabric, telemetry information and statistical information is continuously being pulled from those devices with the help of assurance. And if you want to integrate your SD access fabric with any external entities or any external applications or any external devices, this is possible using the platform tab five-step workflow that we could use over and over from the sd axis from the cattle center okay the cattle center is actually configurable using a graphical user interface that's a traditional way or maybe using a C cli if you want if you want to geek out and just deal with some cli be my guest or maybe you want to be, you know, dealing with the programmability features. Uh, that's also possible. This is all possible. But the main thing, the default way to deal with the uh, DNA center or the cattle center is your graphical user interface. You can geek out and use CLI or programmable APIs if you want it. But then again, this is what we, these are the, the this is the power of the cattle center. Huh. Key points for today. Well, guess what? Network underlay represents a bunch of network devices connected together with a traditional protocol with traditional protocols. Router switches with some traditional protocols. This makes up your underlay. Whereas the S the overlay in the SD access fabric is a bunch of overlay functionalities: the control plane node, the border node, and the edge node. And maybe if you want to add the wireless that control and the access point as well. Segmentation is the most important piece of information that the overlay, the SD access overlay is going to give you thanks to macro and micro segmentation. Let's not forget that there are underlay protocols and there are completely separate overlay protocols which are going to enhance the network experience. Thanks to the Catalyst Center and thanks to the five-step workflow. <laughs> if you have gone that far, then I think you like the video. So hit the like button and share and subscribe and ask me more questions in the comment section let me know about the next topic that you want me to talk about until next time keep watching keep learning thanks for watching this video